Hydrology is the study of water, everything from um, the rain and how rainfall is changing and extremes in rainfall, how water moves around the earth and um, kind of extremes in water availability, so droughts and floods, and try to think of ways to protect society from those extremes. Welcome to Ask Our Experts, where we ask our scientists and engineers your questions. Hi, I'm Liz Lewis. I'm a lecturer in computational hydrology in the School of Engineering at Newcastle University. How is climate change linked to flooding? Because we've got warmer air temperatures, it's holding more water and then it rains more. And so the ground gets wetter and we get more floods. So then how, how does droughts fit into that then? Because like in my head, like droughts and floods are kind of two opposites. So how can climate change kind of cause both? Basically, our, the amount of water that's in our rivers is controlled by two main things, well, three main things. Um, the amount of rain that's falling, the amount of water that's being evaporated up from the ground, and then the amount of water that is being stored in like the soil and the ground as well. Um, so climate change affects two of those things a lot. It affects the amount of rainfall that we're getting, but also the amount of water that's being evaporated away. So um, we get more evaporation when it's warmer. So in climate change, we're likely to see a warmer world and so a lot more evaporation. Um, but we also have the ability to hold more water in the atmosphere, which means that we get more rainfall extremes. So it's really interesting topic to study because um, we're not quite sure what the balance of these two things will be overall. Um, it seems that instead of them just cancelling each other out and everything being fine, it's just more likely that we're going to get a lot more droughts and a lot more floods. So we're going to see a lot more extreme behaviour rather than um, everything just kind of averaging out and being okay. So I'm going to ask you one of the questions that we've had from Tommy and Charlie, who are eight and ten, um, and they, like most people, just think of climate change as things are getting warmer. And they see it as a good thing because they live in Whitley Bay and they want it to be nice and warm all the time. So why, to them, why is it a bad thing? Why is climate change bad? There, I mean, there are maybe going to be a few positives, you know, like it will be warmer in Whitley Bay, sure. Um, but <laughs> uh, there are so many negatives that it seems that they're going to outweigh the positives. So we live in a really interconnected world and lots of things are linked together so um, the food in our supermarkets is from all over the world it's not just from Whitley Bay right and um, so uh, climate change is going to affect everyone all around the world and um, this will mean that there'll be floods and droughts in countries that produce a lot of the food um, that we eat and so we might see disruptions to um, like our food supply chain, which is a big worry. The thing that really worries me about climate change is drought. So um, New again, Newcastle is probably one of the better places to be in the country. So because we're a relatively small um, city with a relatively abundant water supply, so um, Kilda Waters uh, got plenty of water for Newcastle. Um, we're probably okay, but in the south where it's going to get really warm, and their water is dependent on groundwater. A lot of worry about there being droughts in the future down there and availability of water for people. And even in places like the Lake District in Manchester where it rains all the time, um, they're still quite worried that um, their water will evaporate from their reservoirs really quickly. And so we'll see kind of short, intense droughts really frequently. So water supply is a big problem, I think, and food security is a big problem. Uh, so is there anything like we kind of as normal obviously you're doing your bit doing loads of research <laughs> sorting things out but is there anything that kind of other people can do kind of in everyday life to sort of help prevent these changes so i think the most important thing that people can do is let politicians know that it's something that they care about so writing to your mp and um going to climate change protests and things like that is really important to make it um, top of the agenda for politicians to deal with. Um, then on a more personal level, the big things that you can do are not go on aeroplanes, so go on trains and things instead. 
um, to get to places um, because they um, emit greenhouse gases, uh, like a lot of greenhouse gases compared to um, getting the train or say, um, but also they emit them kind of high up in the atmosphere where they're a bit more um, dangerous and or have a bigger impact. Um, and then changing your diet. So eating more vegetables and less meat and dairy is something um, really useful that you can do because uh, meat and dairy production has a much bigger carbon footprint um, than vegetables. And vegetables are good for you too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned as much as I did. If you want to see who we've got coming up and if you want to submit your own questions, then please go to go.ncl.ac.uk forward slash ask our experts.